Indirect inguinal hernias are a common type of hernia that occurs when an intestinal loop or part of the abdominal fat protrudes through a weak spot in the abdominal wall into the inguinal canal. The nature of this hernia is linked to the failure of the processus vaginalis to close, a tube-like structure that, during fetal development, allows the testicles to descend from the abdomen into the scrotum. In most individuals, this structure closes completely before or shortly after birth, but if it remains open, it can become a pathway for an indirect inguinal hernia. Types of Indirect Inguinal Hernia Bubonocele Indirect Inguinal Hernia This type of hernia is confined to the inguinal canal and does not protrude into the scrotum. The hernia sac is found within the boundaries of the inguinal canal, making it palpable during a physical examination, but it is not visible externally as a bulge in the scrotum. Funicular Indirect Inguinal Hernia in a funicular indirect inguinal hernia, the processus vaginalis closes near its distal end, just above the epididymis, but remains open along the rest of its length. This results in a hernia sac that may extend down towards the scrotum, but it is not connected to the tunica vaginalis that surrounds the testis. The contents of the hernia sac can be felt separately from the testis during a physical examination. Complete Vaginal Indirect Inguinal Hernia this type of indirect inguinal hernia involves a hernia sac that is continuous with the tunica vaginalis, the membrane surrounding the testis. It gives the appearance that the testis is lying within the lower part of the hernial sac. This can complicate the clinical presentation, as it may be difficult to differentiate the hernia from the testis itself. Direct inguinal hernia Direct inguinal hernias are a type of abdominal wall hernia that occurs when abdominal contents protrude directly through a weakened area in the floor of the inguinal canal, specifically through the transversalis fascia. Unlike indirect inguinal hernias, which enter the inguinal canal at the internal ring, direct hernias push through the abdominal wall closer to the midpoint of the inguinal ligament, an area known as Hesselbach's triangle. Direct inguinal hernias are always acquired and are more common in adult males, accounting for about 35% of inguinal hernias in this group. Note, the peritoneum may protrude on both sides of the inferior epigastric vessels, giving rise to a combined direct and indirect hernia called a pantaloon hernia. Prevalence Direct inguinal hernias represent a significant portion of inguinal hernias in adult males. They are less common in women. Acquired nature. These hernias develop due to a weakening of the abdominal wall over time, particularly in the area of the transversalis fascia. Location and size. Direct inguinal hernias typically do not descend into the scrotum and tend to be smaller than their presentation suggests, often because the protrusion consists largely of extraperitoneal fat rather than the hernia sac itself. Risk of strangulation Due to the wide neck of the hernia sac, direct inguinal hernias are less likely to become strangulated compared to indirect hernias. Predisposing factors Several factors increase the risk of developing a direct inguinal hernia. Smoking Weakens connective tissue, contributing to the development of hernias. Occupational strain Jobs that involve heavy lifting and straining can predispose individuals to hernias due to increased intra-abdominal pressure. Poor abdominal musculature. Individuals with weaker lower abdominal muscles are at increased risk. Previous abdominal surgery. Damage to the iliohypogastric nerve during procedures, such as appendectomy, can weaken the abdominal wall, increasing hernia risk. Clinical Features Direct inguinal hernias present with specific clinical characteristics. They are typically located behind the spermatic cord, as opposed to indirect hernias which lie within the cord. The hernia mass often consists mainly of extraperitoneal fat, making the sac appear smaller. These hernias are less likely to achieve a large size or descend into the scrotum. Treatment of inguinal hernias Inguinal hernias present a common clinical dilemma with the potential for complications, such as incarceration or strangulation. Observation versus surgery. 
asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic hernias. In elderly or sedentary patients with low operative risk, watchful waiting may be an option given the relatively low annual risk of bowel compromise. Symptomatic hernias. Surgery is recommended for all symptomatic hernias to avoid the risk of complications. Elective repair is well tolerated, even by the elderly, particularly when other medical issues are well managed. Emergency management. Acute incarceration. An urgent or emergent operation may be necessary for acutely incarcerated hernias, especially if severely painful and tender, indicating potential strangulation. Non-operative reduction. Attempted for incarcerated hernias with subsequent elective repair to minimize risk, although emergency exploration may be necessary if there's suspicion of bowel compromise. Principles of operative treatment involves Correction of aggravating factors Addressing underlying issues such as chronic cough or prosthetic obstruction is crucial before repair. Repair techniques For indirect hernias High ligation of the hernia sac with potential reinforcement of the inguinal floor in adults. Direct hernias Typically require mesh reinforcement for attention-free repair due to the weakness of the inguinal floor. Considerations for surgery Bilateral repairs can be performed with a low risk of recurrence using mesh repair or laparoscopic methods. Recurrence Early recurrence often indicates technical inadequacies in the initial repair, while late recurrences may be due to fascial weakening or inherent defects in collagen synthesis. Special Considerations Prosthetic Hyperplasia Addressing significant prosthetic obstruction is recommended prior to hernia repair to minimize postoperative urinary retention risk. Laparoscopy for Exploration This is ideal for assessing bowel viability if there is suspicion of strangulation after hernia reduction. Surgical Operations for Inguinal Hernia The overarching goal is to restore the herniated contents to the abdomen and reinforce the weakened area to prevent recurrence. The choice of technique is influenced by several factors, including the presence of infection, the surgeon's expertise, and specific patient circumstances. Inguinal hernia repair strategies have evolved significantly, incorporating both traditional tissue-based repairs and modern mesh-based, minimally invasive techniques. Traditional tissue-based repairs. Bassini repair. Involves suturing the conjoined tendon to the pupar ligament, maintaining the spermatic cord's anatomical position. Halsted repair. Similar to Bassini, but positions the external oblique beneath the spermatic cord. McVeigh Cooper ligament repair. Extends the repair to the Cooper ligament, suitable for femoral hernias as well, usually necessitating a relaxing incision to alleviate tension. Shouldice repair entails dividing and then imbricating the transversalis fascia to the pupar ligament, involving more extensive dissection but offering lower recurrence rates. Recurrence rates for these traditional repairs vary, reflecting the critical role of the surgeon's skill and experience. Mesh based repairs Lichtenstein repair. An open mesh, tension-free repair where a flat mesh piece is affixed to the inguinal ligament and the conjoined tendon, facilitating early activity resumption and offering low recurrence. Stapa repair. Employs a large mesh piece in a preperitoneal position for recurrent or large bilateral hernias, requiring more extensive dissection. Minimally invasive surgery approaches. Transabdominal preperitoneal and total extraperitoneal. Both techniques place mesh in the preperitoneal compartment, offering reduced pain and quicker return to normal activities compared to open surgery with equivalent long term recurrence rates. Robotic assisted repairs. Gaining popularity due to precision and potentially easier learning curves for surgeons accustomed to open techniques. Selecting the appropriate technique. Patient-specific considerations, age, 
health status, and specific hernia characteristics guide the choice between observation, traditional repair, and MIS techniques. Surgeon Expertise the success of hernia repair, whether open or minimally invasive, significantly depends on the surgeon's experience and familiarity with the chosen technique. Landmarks in Laparoscopic Hernia Repair Understanding the critical landmarks in laparoscopic hernia repair is vital to avoid complications and ensure a successful procedure. Triangle of Doom Location and Boundaries Defined by the gonadal vessels laterally, the vas deferens medially, and the internal ring at the apex. Contents This area contains vital structures, such as the external iliac vessels, the deep circumflex iliac vein, the femoral nerve, and the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve. Significance Injury to the external iliac vessels within this triangle can lead to significant vascular complications. Careful dissection and avoidance of aggressive manipulation within this triangle are crucial. Triangle of pain Also known as an electrical hazard zone is due to the presence of important nerves. Location and boundaries Bounded medially by the gonadal vessels, superiorly by the iliopubic tract, and laterally by the peritoneum. Contents. From lateral to medial, it contains the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, most commonly injured nerve in laparoscopic hernia repair, femoral branch of the genital femoral nerve, and the femoral nerve. Significance. This triangle is notable for its potential for nerve injury, which can result in post-operative pain or numbness. Surgeons should exercise caution to avoid damage to these nerves during dissection or mesh placement. Corona mortis, also known as crown of death, indicating the potential severity of bleeding if these vessels are injured. It refers to the vascular connections between the obturator and external iliac systems. An aberrant obturator artery, which often arises from the inferior epigastric artery, crosses over the Cooper's ligament to join the normal obturator artery, completing a vascular ring. Significance Accidental laceration of this artery can lead to significant hemorrhage, which may be challenging to control. Identifying and preserving these vessels during surgery is essential to prevent bleeding complications. Spaces of interest Space of Retzius, also known as rectopubic space, is located between the pubic symphysis and the urinary bladder. Space of Bagros, also known as retroinguinal space, is positioned deep to the inguinal ligament, adjacent to the space of Retzius. Complications of Groin Hernia Repairs Recurrence Indicative of an adequate initial repair or progressive weakening of the fascia. Chronic groin pain, often associated with nerve injury during repair. Ischemic orchitis or testicular atrophy. Potential complication due to compromised blood supply. Seroma or hematoma. Common postoperative recurrences that usually resolve on their own. Infections, including wound infections and prosthetic complications. Bladder injury or osteitis pubis, specific to the surgical approach and technique used. Nerve injuries. In laparoscopic repair, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is most commonly injured, followed by the genital femoral nerve. In open repair, the ilioinguinal nerve is most commonly injured, followed by the iliohypogastric nerve, and then the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.